Hey developers, so today I wanna to talk to you about how to create a fetch hook that we can use in our application that we we're creating. So we're gonna take a look at how that works. We're gonna go and integrate it into the app that we created. And uh, we're also gonna talk a little bit about how the view composition API works, so stay tuned. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm actually doing something fun. Uh, I think a lot of people wanna learn more about this composition API. There's a lot of moving parts to it. So I'm gonna create a mini course on this. So if you go to viewcourse.tech or click in the link in the description below, I have a, a brand new course I'm gonna come out in the next few weeks. And uh, I'm just gonna go over all the different parts of the composition API as we know them today. And of course they'll be updated if they get changed. So you'll be all ready to go when view three comes out and this is uh, in built into it. So if you just go to viewcourse.tech, put your email address in here. I'll also give you a free cheat sheet, a Vue.js cheat sheet. And I'll be updating that with some stuff from the Composition API in the future. But for right now, you'll get a free cheat sheet. And uh, yeah, I'll let you know when I have this new mini course out. And it'll be, it'll be awesome. All right, so if you are paying attention and if you haven't seen my last video, um, you, you can go ahead and click here. There's also be a link in the description but I created this really simple uh, brew search. So you just type in uh, a name here and it will bring up a list of breweries with that name in it. And uh, don't worry about this error. This is a probably error. This is actually just an error from, from uh, a plugin that I have installed. So, but what I was thinking is what happens if we want to create a, a use function or composable function for fetch that we can reuse throughout our app if we need it later in the future. So let's see if we can go ahead and do that. Um, you can see from right here, this is the app that we created last time. Um, it just uses this submitted, which I'm, if you scroll down here, I'm just using it from use brew list. And then I'm kind of uh, destructuring this val list and submit it out of here and returning it. So let's create a new one. So I'm gonna create something new here. And by the way, this link for the source code will be in the link in the description below, so you can follow along. Uh, don't worry about this error here. I am using, yeah, my Vim extension sometimes has issues. Uh, one thing to keep in mind too, uh, by the way, this, if you don't know, this is called Synthwave 84. It's a really cool theme. So I always get questions on that. So I'll just mention it again. Uh, let's create a one called use fetch. .js. So in this use fetch.js, it's, it's going to be a function that pretty much wraps the functionality over fetch. Now, fetch is pretty easy already, but you know, maybe we're going, going to do a lot more. Um, maybe we want a little bit more flexibility later on. We want it just to type something real quickly in and, and not have to put in all the options and everything else in there. We want to maybe track errors and then also have a loading spinner. So that's kind of the idea behind it. Now I had a question in my last video, people were saying, what about Vuex? Wouldn't you just put all your APIs in Vuex? And I was gonna say, there's there's a couple ways to do it. I know a lot of people, they use uh, some actions and getters and they put all their uh, their API calls in Vuex, which is like the state management system for Vue.js, if you're not familiar. I know some people who create just like a utils file and they put all their uh, API calls in one utils file and then they call it from there. And then I know a lot of people love Axios and you can create interceptors and all sorts of things. So there's a lot of different combinations you can do when you do API calls in Vue.js. Just depends on what your preference is. Uh, I love to hear what you guys use. If you use Vue.js and do a lot of API calls, write a comment below, let me know what you guys how you set it up. Also, um, for the Google alg for the algorithm on YouTube, make sure you click that thumbs up. That really helps me and subscribe. So let's just jump in here. Um, so of course, and by the way, my keyboard's a little clicky. I'm a default function, and we want to add two things: URL and options, because that's what we want in our Fetch API. And the first thing I like to do is I want to import a few things. I'm going to use I'm going to use two refs because I'm going to destructure what I send back. I'm gonna use reactive and watch. And I'm gonna do that from the at view composition API. Save it, make sure, okay. Now, I'm gonna have this state, and this is gonna hold all my reactive state, and it's gonna be an object. 
And really, I want to have three things. I want the response I'm get back from the API. So I'm going to have an error, which I'm going to track errors through here and then display it to the user. And then I want this fetching, which will um, kind of flip-flop between true and false. So if it's true, it's loading, and then it'll false when it ends. And so let's create the function fetch data, and I'll make it async. And from here, I will go ahead and I'm just do the normal try catch block. There's different ways you can do um, error error catching inside JavaScript. Um, we'll just keep an easy try catch block since we're using async. We can also use the finally, which is nice because I'll show you what I want to do there. So in our try block, we essentially want to do is is create a request to the server with what's coming in. So we're going to do response here. I'm going to do an await. I'm going to fetch. And I'm going to just send the URL and options. And I'm going to do, for the JSON, I'm going to take the response and just get the JSON from it. And I'm going to wait. And then finally, I'm going to set the response to the JSON. So I'm just taking what's here in this response and then setting it. Cool. And then if we don't get it, we want to set the error state to errors, which that should be errors. And then finally, I want to put my state dot fetching equals false. And I think that's all I want to do right now. And let's just save it and see if it auto formats. So it does give me an error. Let's see here. Doesn't like my async here. Let's see what I did. Oh, I did it. I forgot error there. <laughs> okay, so now it looks okay. Finally is giving me a little error here. Let's see here. I don't know. I'm going to ignore that for a second. I'm not sure why it's giving me. Maybe I spelt finally with two L, two N's, and it should be there. It is spelt it wrong. <laughs> so we have this fetch data here, and we have don't need a semicolon there. There we go. Now we don't use this fetch data, so it's complaining. So what we could do is I can return it. So the easiest way to do that is return. And I'm going to return two refs. So I'm going to destructure that state. And then I'm also going to return fetch data. And now I can use it in my brew list. So let me make sure I don't have any errors. Oh, it doesn't say I used watch. I'm going to talk to you guys about watch in a second. Let's do it without watch first. So if I go back to my use brew list, here's the brew list. Um, and what I could do is now I'm getting this two refs breweries and getting submitted. Um, but let's let's grab some more stuff here. So I can do const. Um, I don't know. We're going to grab in. Let's see here. So we're going to grab our use fetch in here. So I'll do use fetch. And that'll equal our uh, use fetch. And really, we got a few things out of this, so we're going to do structure what we got out of it. So for if we look here, we're going to have the state stuff and the fetch data. So we know state has response, error, and fetching. So response, error, and fetching. And then finally, we also have this uh, fetch data. It's coming back. So we'll grab the fetch data. And of course, we need to import in this uh, use fetch. So we're going to use use fetch from now. It's in the same folder, so it should see this uh, use fetch. Cool. So we're still not using these, so it's giving us an error that they're unused. But what we can do is instead of doing this response here, we'll actually grab this data here. I'm going to uh, copy it. And then I'm going to paste it in here. And it needs to be a, a string. And then we're going to just send nothing back here. OK, and then so this submitted here, um, 
it's not needed. And we don't need that. And we don't need that. So now uh, what we did is we sent it over. So we got back the fetch data. So we can actually just go ahead and run the fetch data that we got. And we should have received back this response error and, and JSON. So this ref will actually be the response instead. And just for now, I'm not going to worry about error and fetching just to see if this works and see if we broke anything. So I'm going to come back over here and it says parsing error, unexpected token. Okay, so we actually we have an error because we have this submitted and we completely got rid of it. Um, so what you want to do is we'll um, take our fetch data here and we're going to um, just put it inside um, our submitted. And we can actually put this whole thing in here. And now submitted will be sent back through. So let's see if it works. So when you run submitted, it'll go ahead and run this function, which will do the response data for fetch data. It'll call fetch data and it'll set the response to the brewery list and that'll be sent back. So let's see if this works. I hit pub. Oops, I made one mistake here. I also need to make this uh, so it interprets it correct with ES6. Oh yeah, and one more thing. We actually don't need a ref here. We have the response like this. And if we refresh it and try, there we go. Uh, we don't, uh, everything looks fine since the way we sent it back here, we don't actually have to put the response inside uh, of a ref. Okay, cool. So we got all, it's still working here after those few changes. And now we just need to, um, th this is fine, this works, but why do we have to return back the function and then call it again? And that's where watch comes in. So I tried it a couple of ways. I tried to actually run fetch data inside here, like doing something like this. So you could do this and then not return fetch data. And then in use brew list, we don't have the fetch data any longer. And then delete it here. So that works as well. Uh, one thing you could do that I was trying to play around with is create a watch function here inside my use fetch. So I could do something like this watch. And then instead of calling fetch data, I just create this watch. And watch just create this function inside of it. And I just need to run this right here. Instead of having the fetch data like this, you could, um, uh, yeah, pretty much like this, and then you just run it. And then what will happen in this is if any of those values change, it'll go ahead and just recalculate the old val, uh, recalculate, recalculate it again. In, in other words, anytime res, JSON, anything of these changes, it'll go ahead and just uh, run it again. So that could lead some some more interesting ways of handling this, but um, for our purposes, it works exactly the same. So that's three different ways you can do it. You can just have pass in the or pass out the fetch data inside the reactive function back to the use brew list, or you can uh, have it run it after it it creates it, or lastly, you can create a watch function. So and all three th ways work. So let's see, uh, now that we got it all working, we do have error and fetching. Let's see if we can pass those back and use those. So we're gonna go error and fetching inside here. Oops, excuse me. It's already being sent back with state right here. If we go back to use brew list, now we can destructure it. So we can grab error and fetching. We're not using it, but we can return it back we can turn back error and fetching like this. And it's giving us an error that uh, error is declared, but its value is never used. Well, it might be even better. Let me think about this. Let's go, let's change it like this. Let's put an error here and put false and fetching false right here. And then we can just do like this. We can do breweries.error and have it equal error. And then breweries.fetching equals fetching. 
and then we don't have to actually pass it back in here. So now it's all going to be um, sent over with the two refs in this brewery right here. So we go back to search brews, and now we should have access to errors and fetching. Error, error, and fetching. And if we return that back inside our return function, now it should be available in the template. So what we could do here, we have this v4. Um, we can do a div class and put a v vf fetching, and we can just, I don't know, put an h3 here, fetching. Let's see if that works. So if I put type in pub here, now it says fetching and it disappears, so that's cool. So now we can, obviously you wanna put maybe a, a full loading spinner, that would might be good. We can also do something similar for errors. So if there's an error dis being displayed, maybe we could show the error. So error, and let's see if we can just look at the error. Now, we, we don't have any errors normally because the API is working, but let's mess around with it. Let's put a wrong API a URL. So this should give us an error. Let's see. So failed to fetch. So now we have error tracking here at the front end um, that's coming all the way from our use fetch hook that we created, composable hook for Vue.js. So cool. So now it looks like we have everything in place. Of course, we can clean this up a little bit if we wanted to. Um, we, you could probably, this example is fairly simple where we're using this fetch, a use fetch. Um, you could probably just put it all in this, this uh, function right here. There's also probably some tricky things we can do with this. We could maybe, uh, I've seen examples, um, different examples of people passing different functions back and forth and then that triggering with the watch inside the use fetch to go ahead and update the URL. We'll take a look at that in the future, but for now, this is this is one way to do it. I'd love to hear what you guys are using with, with these composables. If you have any suggestions or feedback, like I said, uh, the GitHub will be a link in the description. I really appreciate it. And if you like this video, make sure you click that like button and click that subscribe button. That really helps me out. Thanks.